Welcome back everyone, this is part two with uh, Dan here and we are this time going to be running through our top five family games um, of all time. Now Dan, I didn't tell you this before, I have given myself some caveats on this list, you might right, have done okay. the same. Um, so this is how I got to my top five. So I took all the games that I've played and rated on Board Game Geek and anything that was, and I looked, Ticket to Ride Europe is a rated around a two. So anything heavier than that, I just got rid of that. And then I tried to make it where I feel like everything, you could be on a level, level playing field. So right, okay. no yeah. one, even if I'm playing it with someone brand new, they could actually compete. And I'm thinking that's very good for sort of a family environment. Is there any caveats you gave yourself? Uh, no, but mine vaguely fit that caveat anyway, I would imagine. My my caveats are things my family enjoy playing together, <laughs> that's basically. A, that's a, a great one. So let's uh, kick it off. Do you want to start us off with number five? Yeah, I could do number five. Number five's a, an oldie but a goodie. Um, it's Dixit. Um, now, Dixit's a game where you are basically putting cards out and, in, 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 and trying to get other people to guess which card is your card. Uh, by giving kind of enigmatic clues, really. I'd be surprised if there's many people watching this who haven't played Dixit, so I won't go into it too too badly. I love I love I love playing this with my family for a few reasons. In that, the younger the child you're playing with, the more bizarre <laughs> and off the wall and completely incomprehensible their answers are, and the deeper an insight you get into their weird, twisted psyche. And it's fascinating. It's fascinating playing with a young kid because they're absolutely bananas. Um, so, so it's a, it's a game with very, very simple rules. It's a game that's got beautiful artwork. It's a classic for a reason, in my opinion, is Dix, Dixit. Um, there's many, many games like it, but I think Dixit will still always be our number one. And we've got loads of expansions and things like that. So, so yeah, Dixit, my number five. Yeah, a, br a brilliant game. I've got a number of the expansions. Uh, you say it's good to see into the minds of kids. It's good to see into the mind of pretty much anyone, I think, that, <laughs> that plays it. True. It just missed my list. It was uh, it was the number six um, when, I, when I did my list. My number five, uh, some people would say it's an activity. I think it's a phenomenal game, and that is The Mind. So right. for those, again, most people will probably know what The Mind is. It's a game where the deck has cards 1 to 100 and you have to play them in order between the lot of you. You've got two cards, three cards, depending on the level, but you can't tell anyone else what card you've got before you put it down. So no one knows quite what, when to play their card. There's just a lot of tension. Now, the rules technically say you can't say anything, but there's some great times where we've sort of not we've not said too much but we've hinted so we've used stuff like well if i was hungry i might be leaning towards getting the chinese menu out of the cupboard and stuff like that and it's just the analogy then just goes crazy um yeah. but even without that when you finally manage to do it you feel such a success and everyone's doing it together because it's cooperative it's easy to explain so you can get it to the table within seconds and then everyone can kind of just get that insane pressure that's good pressure of just trying to work out do i play my card everyone's waited too long i'm going for it so mm. what do you think of the mind though dan i've only played it a few times i think it's i think it's good i enjoyed it i think i probably enjoy it more with my family than the people i played it with um but um yeah there's a there's a similar game which i can't remember what it's called but it's a counting game where you've, you've got to secretly count in your head um and and, and things. That's, like, that's a kids game. I can't remember what it's called now. But um, but yeah, I think I think yeah, I think it, it it it's it's fine. It's fine. As I say, I've only played it a couple of times, so I wouldn't be able to wouldn't be able to pass much more comment than that. <laughs> Fair enough. My number four is another cooperative game. Um, it's uh, Forbidden Island by uh, Matt Leacock, which is basically pandemic but boiled down into its essential parts, really. And I genuinely, genuinely believe that this is a better game than Pandemic. I know I'm completely in the minority <laughs> here. That's a bold claim. <laughs> well, no, I do. I think, I think, I think it does everything Pandemic does well, but in a simpler, more elegant form, um, with a much more exciting theme for me personally. Um, 
and it is cheap. This is what I was talking about, Oliver. It is <laughs> yeah. absolutely cheap. It's about 15 quid. And 15 quid for everything you get in that box, with all the cool bits and things like that as well. The beautiful artwork, incredibly accessible. Game Right do a wonderful job of, of making board games accessibly priced. And it's, it's wonderful production. It's in a tin. A lot of people don't like the tin. I quite like the tin, but 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 whatever. Um, and the, I mean, the reason that it's great for families is it is cooperative. And if you've got young children in the group, then sometimes the the age old problem of cooperative games, which is quarterbacking, doesn't really matter with a, a young child because a young child is looking to be quarterback to a certain extent yeah. because that's that's part of the, the development of the learning of the game you know where you could do this or you could do that which one do you want to do you know that kind of stuff um the whole family can play it plays quite a lot of people i, th- I think does it, does it play up to five or six i can't remember but it, but you can play you can play with a, a, even if you're kind of household you can play with a, a, a fair few people and it's just lovely it's just a lovely game and i don't care what anyone says it's better than pandemic so there you go now, I've not played Forbidden Island. I've played Forbidden Desert and then Forbidden yeah. Sky. Forbidden Desert, for me, was the better out of those two. You've got the cool little uh, sort of uh, airship to build. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is, it, is it similar to that one? It's similar. Forbidden, Forbidden Desert is uh, a cut above in complexity. Okay. Um, I would. Um, uh, as I say, Forbidden Island is pandemic as simple as it could possibly be possibly be and it's really nice it's really nice I advise you to play it you could buy it Oliver it's only 15 quid oh, no, it's, it's so cheap <laughs> it's bag um, it could be 20 I'm not sure well I mean <laughs> if that that rules it out then really <laughs> uh, so my number four is Catch the Moon which is a, a very sort of I think underappreciated dexterity game so I could mm-hmm. have put Junk Art on the list here because I think that works really well for families and people of all ages but for me catch the moon is just it, there's something about it so effectively you've got this cloud shaped plastic bit at the bottom there's like two or three straight ladders that you put into this base and then the rest are all higgledy, higgledy piggledy ladders that you've got to slyly slowly balance on and it tips over and there's sort of ladders and you have to some you roll the dice one time you'll have to add it to and it's got to be the highest thing on the structure the next time it might have to touch two ladders or just touch one and it doesn't quite matter where it is in the game it doesn't matter what you roll they're all going to be hard because there's mm-hmm. either so many ladders that touching just one is really impossible almost or trying to balance it so it doesn't all fall down that it's the tallest and that's also hard it just creates crazy looking structures. I don't know if you've played this one. I have. I have. I've played it a fair few times. And I, and I think one of the things it's really got in its favour, it's a beautiful looking game as well. You you, you you look at it and it looks it looks elegant and beautiful and like a like a I, I don't know if it is French, but it looks French to me, just catch the moon. <laughs> it looks like a it looks like a, a, a it looks like it belongs in Amelie or something like that, one of these French kind of art house films. It's a it's a lovely looking game. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it always attracts attention. If you're playing it, people do stop, like with most dexterity games, that people do stop and look because they're waiting for it all to fall down. Uh, mm. And it looks like it's always about to because it just looks almost like an explosion of ladders sort of thing. It's a great game. Great game. Uh, so, number three, what's uh, what? what have you got for that? Well, my number three is something you've already mentioned. Ooh. It's Junk Art. Oh, um, yes. Yeah, so there you go. Um, and, and Junk Art, <coughs> I don't tend to like dexterity games. I don't tend to like stacking games. But Junk Art, I really do like because there's a... For a start, you've got a wide variety of different games within that box. So, again, value for money for yeah. families. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can... You can um, if you don't like a particular game or you don't only have two people playing that 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 day or you've got five people playing that day there's there's a there's a mini game within that that will suit suit whatever you've got going the pieces are really nice i've got the plastic version but that's fine i think the plastic version is actually better than the wooden version other than doesn't feel quite as nice um but i've got the the the, the pieces are all kind of very unique um I just think you get a lot in that box and you get nearly every single dexterity game I ever want to play in that box because there's so many different versions. I think it's like a, a variety pack. It's like getting those 
those little cereal boxes you used to get when you're camping. Um, you know, you, 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 you can choose what you want to do on that particular day for, for the mood you're in, and I think that's wonderful. So, Junk Hearts, incredibly versatile. All the games are incredibly good quality. The pieces are great quality, and it's just entertaining. It's just an entertaining, you know, and you always get someone... Don't wobble the table. All <laughs> yeah. that kind, of, all the stuff you get with a with a with a dexterity game, a stacking game. Which would you? Which is your sort of favourite of the sort of the mini games? Oh, it, it's uh, difficult to say. I, I tend to play a lot of the games I play is two player because it's my, me and Cora, the real gamers in, in in the in the family. I think I think I like the one where you pick the ones where you're picking what the other person's going to do. <laughs> so you can try and, and screw you know, the, them the, over the, a little like, bit. Yeah, the kind of mean ones. I mean, there's not often you get that in a dexterity game where you, you, you're looking at all the things, what's the hardest thing they're going to have to do here and, and, and pick one of those and pass it to them. So, so yeah, no, that's my favourite. Yeah, no, Why yeah, yourself? Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, no... Uh, Junk art is a like I said, I nearly I nearly put it on the on the list instead of Catch the Moon. I like the way that once one time you're building on a central structure, and the next time you're doing your own structure and someone's trying to screw you over uh, yeah, uh, and things yeah. like that. It, it it works really well. Um, my uh, number three is everyone likes the idea at least of Pictionary. I think it just it's a little bit old. It takes a little bit long, so. My one is sort of, to me, the modern version of that, and that's Doodle Rush. Um, All right. So everyone is effectively still drawing pictures, but everyone's doing that bit at the same time. The whole game takes like six minutes to play. So you get a card with six words on it. You've got six small little white boards. You quickly, as soon as the timer goes, you've got about a minute to draw as many of those six words down as possible. As soon as that timer stops, you'll you'll look up from yours and you start shouting at what you think other people's are. You know, you'll shout, that's a giraffe. Actually, they've drawn a horse really badly because they were trying to do it quickly and and things like that. Uh, It's got all that sort of fun of getting things right and wrong that Pictionary has. Um... But it's just so much faster, and as as soon as that next minute of guessing's over, it's back onto a minute of drawing. Uh, so there's literally sort of three full rounds of minute of drawing, minute of guessing, and at the end, if you if yours are still there, you lose points for people not guessing yours, and you get points for guessing everyone else's. It's just it's great fun. Have you have you given it a go at all? I haven't. No, I'm a massive fan of the designer, not necessarily for his games, but for his content creation. Have you have you seen Adam in Wales? Yes, I actually I've played a few uh, games with Adam. I haven't actually played Doodle Rush, but I have had the uh, opportunity. He's he's a great fun to to play games because he always I'm analyzes sure it as well. Uh, he's a, he's a, he appears to be a lovely man, and I, I had this um, this ongoing thing with um, John from uh, Actual Lol about who's his biggest fan, because because I, I think I think he's absolutely amazing as a as a as a content creator and as someone who describes what the game design process is like. Um, but no, I haven't played Doodle Rush. I I, I should do. Yeah, I should I, do. I'd highly um, recommend it. It's it's absolutely brilliant. So, what is your number two? My number two, you see, this is. I thought you were going to say what my number two was. We, we, our, our list is kind of a, a piggybacking off each other. Ah, here we go. My, my, my number two is my replacement for Pictionary. Okay. Um, uh, and it is um, a game that I've never failed to be on the floor rolling around in laughter with. It's Telestrations. Um, Brilliant. Te- Telestrations is a game where you, you do a picture of, of something, you pass it on to the next person they have to guess it what it is they write it down you you pass it on to the next person they then draw a picture of whatever the other person wrote down so it's kind of a um I, I, kind of a, a telephone game that's what i'm looking for the telephone game but with with pictures um and some of the the jo- and especially playing with children makes it even funnier because some of the drawings aren't wonderful but some of the the jumps from from thing to thing and then at the end you read them all out and it's this is definitely an activity rather than a game because i don't remember any time i've ever even tried no. bothering scoring I this think, game i think i tried the first time i played illustration <laughs> yeah. and then it's like le- next round should we not score we'll just yeah, we'll just well, laugh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Not score, just laugh. That's it. But um, I've played it with adults. I've played it with uh, when I've been out drinking with friends. I've played it with my family. I've played it, and I've never ever failed to have possibly one of the. I think the only game that made me laugh more is um, Times Up, but um, which I haven't got on this list because you need more people for that. I think, but um, as long as you've got a relatively big family, you need about five people really. Telestrations is just absolutely amazing. 
Yeah, I think that's probably, like you alluded to, my probably my only down point of Telestrations. I think really with even up to four, it's not quite yeah. enough. You need that five, six, and that is the, like a great sweet spot for this game. It goes around quickly. Yeah. You can quickly then flick through and laugh, but there's enough that what it started as and what it ends as it's never the same thing. No, it's not. I remember going from Peace to Pokemon. Wow. For example. That, that, <laughs> That's yeah. quite good going. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was Pokeballs got very confusing. Um, but... Um, but yeah, no, no, you do need enough. That's a, that's a downside. I've got five in my family, but you do you do need enough space for it to go wrong because there's no play. <laughs> yeah. If you, if you're doing it right, there's no point playing really. I don't, well, um, I'm not sure it ever goes right that game in a, no, in a good true. way. In a that's good way. True. Yeah. Um, so my number two is like with the last one, uh, a classic sort of family game, Uno, um, but it's got a bit of a twist on it, and that's Blank. Um, you're shaking your head. No, I'm just laughing. Go on, carry on. Carry on. Uh, so Blank is a game which takes the the concept of Uno of trying to get rid of all of your cards and basically being able to play the same colour or the same number. But it puts a lot of twists on it when it comes to the rules and you start writing on cards and stuff. So by the end you, or of end of a game, you write a, a new rule down. So eventually your deck becomes your deck. It's completely different. You can play it with different people, but it gets just better and better if you play it with the same group or same family group over and over again. The rules are silly. So it's like when you play a green card, everyone's got to touch the floor and whoever does it last draws a card as a penalty or touches their nose or uh, has to make an animal noise or something like that. We've created rules... Um, which are you know people having to speak in different accents and stuff which obviously is instantly hilarious when they do it really badly um but yeah i don't know if you played blank at all it's... i've got it i've just got it behind me oh. now. i was, was gonna i was gonna reach to, to, to <laughs> grab it yeah but no I've got, I've got it behind me um you you write and that's what our game looks like as well that it's all these silly rules but if you were of a different persuasion and you were playing with a heavy euro -y group you'd end up with rules which got very complex. Yeah, very and, and different. Like that because very it's different. completely customizable for the group. So you're right. It's almost like Uno, the legacy game, basically. Yeah. I mean, it's always um, different, isn't it? You could... Yeah. It, it, it's, a, it's an incredible piece of work. It's an incredibly clever piece of design because because it's leaving all the design to you. It's passing that creativity over to the over to the um, the, the the you know the customer I suppose I don't know, consumer yeah. you know, the player anyway whatever no it's a, it's a great game great game blank yeah, yeah. it's really good I, I've, I've got the expansion as well which was blank demic um, the Matt Lee right. sort of micro expansion I don't think it's necessarily worth it it just adds a little bit of more maybe gamery theme into the mix right um, I didn't know if, have you seen that one at all no I, I didn't even know that was existing no, yeah it, no. it's not it's certainly not necessary and I, to be honest, most of the time I keep it shuffled out just because it's easier just to play blank with everyone. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was an odd thing <laughs> that was included. Yeah. Right, so last but not least, the the number one spot on Dan's list. What is it? Well, Oliver, this is my Uno um, substitute. Oh, this is impressive. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm always one. You're always one ahead of me. Um, it's not. It's not blank though, um, and it's a lot less cerebral than blank. Believe it or not, um, it's Llama by Rainer Knizia. Okay. Um, now, Ra Llama is basically Uno with a few twists, and I won't go into what the twists are because number one, I'm, I'm rubbish at explaining games. And number two, it doesn't really matter. There's a there's a few, there's a few decisions to be made within Llama, but ultimately, it's Uno. You know, trying to get rid of all your cards. Um, if you you're the last to get rid of all your cards, you, you take penalty points depending on what you have got left in your hand. And there's various ways you can get rid of these penalty points, which have the kind of Reiner Knizia twist on it. But I mean, I know for, I know Tom Vassell really doesn't like this game because he says there's no decisions in it. And and to be honest, there are very few. There are some, but there are very few decisions. But um, I could almost put Uno in here as well because, again, what I'm looking for in a family game is a game that everyone can play, that everyone finds hilarious, that my 17-year-old daughter starts swearing at me for, <laughs> um, which, granted, not a lot of... Maybe some parents wouldn't like that, but but I, I, I love that, you know, the the excitement of that it that it brings and the... Um, uh, you know, my, Cora's falling on the floor with laughter as, as she's put a card down that her brother doesn't want her to play and, and all that kind of stuff. This really joy... I think Llama 
is a joyful game. It's a joyful game. It's it's like a popcorn. It's like a, an Avengers movie or something. You, it's just a joyful romp all the way through it. It's fast if you want, you know. So so anyone with a kind of short attention span can, you know, you can do a couple of rounds, or you can you can you can space it out longer. You can play a number of, you know, goes round. Um, and it's just it's just fun. It's just fun. Don't care what Vassal says. You're wrong, Vassal. It's it's a it's a good game. Well, I mean, it got a number of awards, right? So it did. Uh, it did. It was a, you nominated m- for the Spiel des Jahres. So you must be yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. And it's Knizia. I mean, everything Knizia does is gold, apart from all the ones that he does that ads. <laughs> but we forget about those ones, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So my number one is. Uh, completely new it's not trying to sort of be an old game but a new version at least that's well i don't think it is uh, and that is and i'm going to cheat a little bit ice oh, call one and two so right. they're basically the same game because one's just a mirror version of the other um, but it's all about flicking these penguins around the ice call high school um one person's trying to catch the rest everyone else is trying to get through doorways to collect fish but if you add the two together not only can you make bigger maps you can also do races and stuff like that you can learn to sort of flick it so it jumps over walls you can apparently i've never managed to do it curve the penguins through doors Um, but it's one of those games where you can Everyone has a good time. You can be absolutely atrocious at it and still be laughing at the end of it. Because you can Mm. try and flick this penguin through a door that's right in front of it, a few inches away, and it hits the edge, bounces back, and it's your penguin is exactly where it was at the start of that turn. And even you will be laughing at it at the end. I think it's just one of those ones that's simple fun. Everyone sort of looks at it, even adults will look at it, and they go okay i'm sure it's fun let's give it a go and after about five minutes they are high-fiving each other around the table cheering whooping hollering all of that as soon as they try and you know get through it two doors at once the whole room goes crazy sort of thing brilliant game ice cool have you played it this is I have, and this is where you and I diverge because I hate high school with a passion. Oh, um, I, <laughs> I really don't like flicking games. I really don't like flicking games. Um, and when 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 you say you can flick it and you miss, and it's hilarious. No, it's infuriating, <laughs> and the game goes through the window. Um, so so uh, yes, I'm sorry. I, I thought I thought we were on. I thought we were in tune there, but just at the end, just we, at the we, end. we we uh, we think. I, I would say my version, my equivalent to this would be Pitch Cow, which I think is a slightly better game. But but I but I really don't like high school. But I. I the reason is I don't like flicking games, so um, so I'm never going to like it. Well, I've got no I've got no manual. Look look at look at that. I can't even, I can't even <laughs> well, pit, no manual pitch car is a game that I would like to try at some point. So perhaps that would bump it off the list. It's um, but... it's, a, it's a different game. It's a different game. It's still annoying because you go off the track and it's frustrating. Um, it's expensive as well. I think I, th- I, th- I think Ice Cool is probably if you like Ice Cool, I'd stick with Ice Cool. Fair enough. Well, there you have it. Obviously, my list was uh, superior to Dan's. Uh, and <laughs> apart, Yeah, this was, was good apart from the end. <laughs> and we now know that Tom Vassell is definitely wrong uh, because He's, Dan uh, has made his number one game, Llama. So there we yeah. go. We've, uh, we've learned a lot here. So thank you very much, Dan. Um, if anyone, if you're, you've watched this, make sure to go and check out sort of the interview that we did about Core Request, um, the game that Dan and his daughter Cora have uh, designed and is currently on Kickstarter. So go and check yeah. that video out if you've not. No, and there's no flicking in it. There's no flicking that in that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, go and check that video out and check the uh, Core Request Kickstarter out as well. Thank you very much, Dan, for for joining no me on this. Uh, and uh, goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.